Many people don't know that Utah is home to a vast underground energy resource that's been around since the age of the volcanoes. But many people do come to enjoy it at places like the Homestead Crater, where they come annually to swim and to scuba dive. And it's that vast resource, a geothermal resource, that heats the waters in that crater. This resource, interestingly, can provide more than just recreational value. It can actually be harnessed to produce energy, a clean, reliable, sustainable source of baseload energy that's available for heating, fueling our homes and businesses. Geothermal in the state of Utah has got a long history. About the turn of the century, the pioneers recognized the geothermal feature that was out here and they developed a resort out here. Uh, the miners in the area from around the, the valley would travel here to soak in the hot tubs and then they eventually built a swimming pool uh, that the public used until the mid-1960s. As the reservoir subsided, stopped issuing out onto the ground so the swimming pool dried out. Shortly after that, I believe it was Phillips Petroleum, started doing exploratory drilling in the area and they realized that there was a lot of geothermal in the area and they developed a small generation unit. They proved that geothermal power could be generated with the steam that's available at this resource. So they decided to build the Blundell Geothermal Plant, which is a single flash unit. The single flash unit was developed, constructed, and went online in 1983. This plant was the uh, first geothermal facility outside of California. We have the flash unit. We also have what's called a binary unit. So combined, the plant uh, puts out somewhere in the vicinity of uh, 35 megawatts. Yeah, there are a number of sites in southwest Utah that have geothermal. Blundell is the hottest resource in the state of Utah as far as geothermal goes. Uh, this particular plant with the flash technology and we have these production wells and we're, we're bringing in this hot brine and steam to the surface and the uh, steam is then brought up into the plant to drive our steam turbine and generator here at this unit. Once the steam goes through the steam turbine, uh, we will then condense that steam. We have now the opportunity that we can re-inject that water back into the existing aquifer. We are continually extracting from the aquifer and then we are also replenishing the aquifer. With the geothermal, the power comes, it's steady, it's reliable, it's clean, and it's green. And Nell uses the binary process to make renewable energies. We start by pumping geothermal fluid out of the ground, use that geothermal fluid, and transfer that thermal energy from the geothermal fluid to a working fluid, in this plant's case, uh, pentane. Uh, the pentane is superheated into a superheated vapor, drives a reactionary impulse turbine, uh, which is directly coupled to a generator. The generator spins, makes power, and sells it to the U.S. grid. That geothermal fluid never touches the surface, and therefore there's zero emissions from, from this plant. Because of a renewable energy plant like this, we've reduced uh, CO2 output um, from energy production of approximately 115,000 pounds a year. Uh, in the States here, uh, Enel produces about 7.4 terawatt hours of uh, renewable energies every year. Uh, the Coport power plant here produces about 160 gigawatt hours every year. It's enough to power about uh, 13,000 U.S. households. Utah has a vast uh, amount of geothermal energy, and uh, I, I think that uh, with advances in technology as they continue, uh, we'll be able to utilize those resources more to build more geothermal energy power plants. Here in Utah, we are currently third in the nation in production of this resource, but we fall well behind uh, the front runners, which are California and Nevada. But Utah at 80 megawatts is poised to get there. We've got 2,200 megawatts of in-place resource, and we think we can do it. We've got research efforts that are taking place, and we want to advance those research initiatives. We want to provide the innovation. We want to provide the infrastructure that can allow us to realize that potential. And it is an important part, not just of our local energy future or our regional energy future, it's a part of our national energy future. Yeah, the, the crucial thing about the Utah Geological Survey is it helps with wise land use decisions. So anything to do with information below the ground, resources, hazards, and the general geological environment, groundwater, our job is to try to get the most objective data possible of what's there. So this area between Delta and Milford uh, has tremendous potential 
in terms of further development for all the renewables, wind, solar and geothermal, because it's so well connected through the transmission lines to Southern California. The FORGE project will occur in near Milford, Utah. FORGE stands for Frontier Observatory for Research in Geothermal Energy. DOE put out a solicitation and selected five sites um, for, for their initial evaluation. Their concept at this point is to develop a laboratory from the beginning where we can test techniques and, and develop a, a commercial scale system. And that is what the forge is. The new technology has been developed for oil and gas that have been so successful finding both oil and gas in very tight rocks. They're wanting that technology to be applied for geothermal and see if we can make geothermal a lot more price competitive. We'd like to be able to use what they've learned over the years, but extend it to greater temperatures and much harder rocks. The Forge Laboratory will consist of two wells. One will be for injection of water into the hot granite, and the second well will be for the production of water from the hot granite, and the water will be pumped in, in and out. The two wells will be connected um, at the surface and underground. Underground, they'll be connected through fractures, uh, which will provide the permeability. The water that's injected will be groundwater. It will heat up as it moves through these, these fractures, kind of like a radiator does. And, and we will then produce it from, from the second well. The geothermal potential as a whole, there's hundreds of megawatts of potential there and only a small amount, just a little less than 100 megawatts have been developed so far. So there's a lot of hot rock. The plan is to allow these, these wells to run for five years to learn how the wells are stimulated, how the, how the fractures grow with time, um, how much energy we can produce from these fractures. We're excited. This is going to be a, a huge project it will involve the local community, it will involve private landowners, the regulatory agencies, a tremendous amount of support and organization. We think it's a, a project that, that belongs in Utah, and we're excited to move ahead with it. Utah is blessed with diverse energy resources that allow us to deliver on this promise of a diverse energy portfolio. The nation is looking to advance renewable resources and Utah, but especially my district, we're in this great position in terms of resources and research and technological innovation. I want you to know we support the exciting innovations underway and hope Utah is successful in obtaining this FORGE grant. This has the potential to place Utah really at the forefront of geothermal conversation in the 21st century. You know, last summer I had this great opportunity to climb on the top of a 300-foot wind tower, which was a lot of fun. And as I stood on the top of the tower, I could see a geothermal site. I could see uh, a solar uh, facility. I could also see in the distance where we had traditional carbon uh, energy being produced. That's what Utah wants to represent. Every source of energy and the power that all of them and the ability it gives us to be energy independent while we're taking care of our environment at the same time.